Aaron Gordon baptized Landry Shamit. Nikola Jokic strengthened his case for a third consecutive MVP with a 41-point triple-double, and Jamal Murray showed up in the clutch like his typical self. The NBA is better this year because of Murray's return, given he's one of the best shot creators in the game. As I went in depth on in this video, Denver's depth with two-way veterans on the wing like Bruce Brown, Jeff Green, and most effectively Contavious Caldwell Pope, to go along with young weapons like Michael Porter Jr. and Bones Highland, give the criminally underrated big three of Jokic, Murray, and Gordon a ton of support. Today we're going to focus on how the Mile High pulled out a massive W in a Game of the Year type affair, proving they've got some top-heavy nastiness in their personnel. Before that, just 12.3% of you watching are subscribed, so subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Also hit thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Phoenix's Devin Booker was forced to leave this one after playing just four minutes following a groin injury. But fueled by starters Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton, Mikhail Bridges, and Torrey Craig, who scored 65 points, along with a bench unit, which combined to outscore Denver by plus 36 on the game, the Suns were up by double digits for a good portion of the second half. Denver did go on a 22-13 run in the final six minutes of the third to make it a three-point game entering the fourth. However, despite being undermanned, Phoenix would have enough energy to throw another overhand right, extending their lead back to eight with under five minutes left in the fourth. The kid from Kitchener, Ontario, Canada, Jamal Murray hitting daggers and throwing down a shocking poster which we'll get to later on, helped send it to OT. More plays on Jamal and Nicola will be broken down shortly, but someone who doesn't get nearly enough credit on this Nuggets team is Aaron Gordon. Displaying his speed in the open court and monster vertical jump, AG threw down seven jams in this one, putting on an in-game dunk contest. His most impressive dunk initially seemed like it was going to be this nasty one-handed lob finish on the fast break, but then after flying up the court on an off-the-dribble coast-to-coast attack, right as Shamit sliding over to try and draw the charge, Gordon sends Ball Arena into a frenzy, but it was a short-lived frenzy, as this official would just about ruin the highlight by calling it a charge. The play was challenged by Mike Malone, and while Gordon was robbed of winning two dunk contests during his time in Orlando, this time he wasn't robbed as the call was overturned and the baptization became official. Aaron's two-way versatility in terms of his perimeter clamps and switchability on defense has been a big part of Denver's success. Also making AG versatile is the fact that he's elite at both spacing the floor and slashing to the basket. Entering this season, the product of Arizona had never made more than 37.5% of his shots from three-point range over a season, and that came in a year where he was limited to just 25 games. We're not even halfway through the year, so this stat could very well be inflated, but so far throughout 29 outings in 2022-23, Gordon's knocking down a career-best 39% of his triples, attempting 2.73s on average per night. Most noteworthy in his third campaign in the Mile High City, he's setting a career high by around 9 percentage points in field goal efficiency, making 61% of his 11 shots attempted. That makes him the second most efficient power forward in basketball, only behind Brandon Clark. Picking his spots effectively and his improving chemistry with debatably the greatest passer anyone's ever witnessed in Jokic has made Gordon the ultimate beneficiary of Denver's system. Whether he's coming off pin downs to either spot up or cut back door, drawing fouls with his combination of tight handle and strength, or as we saw on Christmas Day, gathering momentum for throwdowns one after the next, given his fit next to the top duo of Jokic and Murray, what a trade steal Aaron has turned out to be. He hasn't looked as healthy as he does now, maybe since his fourth or fifth year in the association. The now 27-year-old former fourth overall pick doesn't have the weight of the world on his shoulders like he had in Orlando, but again, it's more so that Gordon meshes so well with Jokic and Murray, along with the entirety of Denver's personnel. While Gordon was critical all throughout, primarily closing it out in the make-or-break moments, it was Jokic and Murray. Early in the fourth quarter, out of a sideline out of bounds, Najee Marshall's gonna set this flex screen. Jamal cuts to the left corner at 100 miles per hour, yet even after gaining all that momentum, somehow stops on a dime for the drifting catch and release. Watch the handle and guard-esque vision from the Joker right here to cross over into the lane and spot Gordon for the lob. 
Next, he fakes the DHO and spots Aaron with a bullet down the heart of the Sun's defense. This next innovative action sees Jokic set a flare screen for Murray, and then Murray slip a back screen for Gordon. Jamal then pops out to the top of the key to receive a handoff and simultaneous screen from Jokic, which gets him enough space for the open shot, albeit with Ayton and Bridges desperately closing out, but a great playset. Next, he finds MPJ on the weak side with a teardrop entry pass. In terms of Nikola's scoring, this double jab step, crossover, Euro step into the lane, and Dirk Nowitzki-esque one-legged lean back to fend off Bismack Biombo gets him the tough and one. Decent contest from Biz again right here, but Jokic drains the spot up bomb with ease, but this was my favorite play of the night. Spins off CP3, fakes the step back, and watch the crafty awareness to stop short and hit a one-legged deep floater in Ayton's grill. Jokic rim runs to seal off Ayton as KCP makes his drive knowing Nicole is under the basket, and his excellent hands allow him to control the high-velocity rebound with one hand. Out of another SLOB with Denver down two in the dying seconds, following a screen, Another Jokic Murray handoff sees the stationary pick from Nikola make just enough contact with Bridges and showing he's fully healthy back to the blue era we all know and love. Watch the angle Jamal uses to gather momentum after coming off the pick. Ayton's just a bit slow to rotate over and Murray yams it on him. That play got it to OT, but this next sequence sealed it in overtime. AG gets the chase down swat on Ayton, and watch the incredible activity from Porter Jr. to outbattle Torrey Craig for the tap away and getting it to Gordon. Aaron saves it from going out of bounds, whipping it over the head of Bridges to Nicola, who finds the cutting Gordon for the reverse. Nicola, Aaron, and Jamal combined for 95 points in this one, just relentless. Again, Denver's got a very underrated big three. Also, as I mentioned before, this was a game of the year type caliber back and forth performance. Credit to both the undermanned Phoenix Suns who definitely fought hard, and this scrappy, deep, and top heavy Nuggets squad who are the very best in the West as I speak. Follow at DFlowHoops on Instagram and Twitter if you want to support my content even further than you already potentially have. More importantly, in your opinion, for today's Community Speaks question, where will Denver finish in the West standings in 2023 and why? Top answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out, and top 5 commenters by March 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's shout out goes to Mr. Irrelevant who says Al Horford deserves more love, his defense is also pesky for Giannis, and his overall IQ and fantastic set shot behind the arc makes him very valuable. Great take. Let's see if Big Al among other Celtic role players can keep proving themselves. Anyways, appreciate every take. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.